on this island. That whoever believes in him will have eternal life. God did not send his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved for him. And the verdict is this, that those who believe are the same. Those who do not believe, they are not condemned, because they did not believe in the one the Father has. reading today, we have the experience of our time. The first reading today is an open of an eye, what's going in the church today. I'm talking about all those who are baptized. They don't want to hear the word of the prophet anymore. In fact, they are not there to hear it. And even those who are in the pew, they don't want to hear it. Because if they hear it, they will change. They don't want to hear it. They snuff at the word of the Father. Ah, oh, let them talk. After all, nobody will to tell them what to do. The way and play games and the play games. We disgrace the sanctuary of what we did to our churches today. We closed them. We sold them. We took the walls down. Nothing is sacred anymore. Speaking about the curtain that covered the sanctuary, and behind that was the holy. Today nothing is holy anymore. Today we take the host in our hand. Yes, it's a privilege of our vision, but we don't know what we are dealing with. Today we go in church the way we want to dress. After all, what we're standing, how if you don't like it, don't look at. Today we go, you know, and deal with, with our faith like something living and leave it, take it or leave it. That is the work of the enemy. The enemy is doing that. And you know what doing that? Our progress of science. We put more trust in that progress than in the one who gives the progress to God. We will alienate the giver so that we focus on the one, on the thing that we receive. And that's exactly what the people of Israel did. When the prophets came to the remind them of their covenant with God, not only they lied to them, not listened to them, but they slaughtered them. Sixteen of them all died and martyred them. In fact, Jesus said, now that you killed your prophet, you want to build orders to them? And you are children of the murderers because what you did to the prophets, you are about to do it to me. And what happened? They put their trust in Assyria. We put our trust in the superpower of America. We put our trust in our army, in our strength of the world.
God does not anymore need it because I make myself God. God does not anymore need it because I have the means to survive. I don't need him to survive. That first reading today is a meditation of what we have done to our church. And when I speak church, I'm not speaking about just about all baptized, including parents. So what happened to many of our children? You took the easy way with that. And you don't build them as men and women. Today, they are not living their faith. Who is living with whom? Have children with whom? They become like pagans. They don't know that there is a God that they need in their lives. They are so frustrated and they are so alienated and they have no goal while they are living in this world. They are killing themselves because they put themselves in the power of a drug, of their substance. History repeats itself. That's why I go to the words of Jesus today, which really reinforce what I am just saying. Jesus said, the condemnation is this, that they refuse to believe in the one the Father has sent. And who is this Jesus? Is the incarnate word of the eternal God, who comes to us as a shower of love from the Father. The Father so loved the word that he gave us his only son. And then he continues and say, and those who do not believe in him, they avoid the light. Because the light overshadows their evil ways. Because their actions are wicked. But then he says to Nicodemus, as Moses lift up the servant in the desert, in the time of anger against God, in time of anger against Moses, we are fed up with this food. We are fed up with this journey. Why you brought us out from Egypt to this trial in the hands of these scorpions of these? We are going to die of starvation and hunger. And God sent among them servants that bid them swallow up. And in that agony, God heard the voice of Moses. He said, Mount a serpent of rocks. Put it on a pole. And whoever looks at the brass at the brass serpent, they will not die. Today he said to the good news. I come to fulfill the scriptures. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man deliver it up. And when I will open arms, I am on that cross, I will draw the word to myself. And that's why I reside on the promise of hope in the second reading. St. Paul speak to us and said, when we were ungodly people, when we were sin, when we were designed to be destroyed because of the rejection of God's love, God found in his heart to redeem us. And he saved us when we were at the core of sin. And that salvation comes not from the goody goody that we can perform. But some people think because Father Carver is this, this and this, I am worse than you. It's not because of the goodness of me or somebody else. So that none of us can be proud, or none of us boast. But we are saved because of the mercy of God. That is our salvation. Through that alone you are saved. Not through me or through anything else. And he will save us, so he will shower his mercy on us to give us another chance. And another chance open our minds, open our eyes to see the direction he wants to take us. Maybe 
their people one more week and the land will be open. You know that? Next Sunday is the last Sunday of Lent. Because the following Sunday is one Sunday. Again and again I repeat to you the same question. What are you doing for Lent? Many people say, what Father? I am so caught up in my work that I don't find time to do nothing. How many of you will go in the garden in, in the middle of May or even at the end of May to cut some flowers? If you don't put any seed or cultivate your bushes that you have. How many of you next year will go to the back? If you don't invest money today, how many of you are going to have a diploma in your hands if you don't go through the cycle of schooling? Everyone is going to reap what they have sown. There is no if, there is no but. Many people complain about that parish and that parish and this parish. They have nothing. They don't open their churches for nothing. We have nothing during the week. And the answer is, because you have not attended the services. We have two stations of the cross that Christ. For those who cannot drive at night at 12, for those who work at 7 o'clock, the seven o'clock mass. We have two extra masses during Lent for those who don't make the eight o'clock because they work Wednesday and Friday. I don't see the difference. That walk of Jesus is your walk. It's my walk. Let me explain it to you. You are going to be condemned unjustly. Sometimes you don't do things and the teacher says to you, yes. You are going to be loaded to the cross. You are going to fall under the heavy nature because we are humans. There are going to be people in our life who try to help us, like Mary and Veronica and Simon. We are going to walk again and fall, but we are going to encounter people who try to feel sorry for us. They can do nothing for us because you have to do it for yourself. They are going to expose us. The word for expose, you don't expose, but they will shame you. Do something stupid and you will see what the word do to you. They will never cover for you, they will expose you. They will force you to be nailed to a cross. They will push you on that cross for everyone to see. Then they don't want you anymore in their lives, and that's why they want to bury you. And that's what they will do to you if you are for Christ. If you look at the history of the church, our founders and forefathers of the church, they did not die a normal death. They were all martyred because they said for Jesus. And then do it to you in a very unique way. Because if you are going to speak to speak the truth, they don't like to hear it. Because the truth is going to expose them. And they want to shut you up. Look at your mother. I see some young people. When she confronts you with a situation, and in that situation, that is the truth, because mother is always having it. The thing that you know, they have not five, not six, not, not eight, but hundred senses. They can smell you from above. And they can tell you exactly what you did. Because you are dealing with a person who lived your life. They did not come from heaven with, with wings. They were humans like you. So they know all the tricks of life. When they confront you, the first reaction on your part is to lie, to deny, to attack. But if your mother is a mother, she will put her foot down, and her words will become a law. And that's what makes you a man or a woman to want. Because if she allows you to 
take the road. Today you open the refrigerator and you take her recipe, whatever she had prepared for dinner. And tomorrow you will take bring a gun and shoot her where she's in bed. She doesn't allow you to take your correction. We are nothing but animals with reason. And everyone knows, even if you have a dog, unless you train that dog to do what you want him to do, you will be sleeping and he will eat you alive. Dear people, what happened in the family is happening in the church today. Many people have the nerve to point fingers and say, what are the young people today? Those young people today are not there because they went there by themselves. You and I are there. Do you stand for your faith? Did you live your authenticity and sincerity of your faith? Don't blame your daughter because she is doing this and this and this. Because you have contributed to her lifestyle. I as a priest has to answer in front of God for many a time. I close not one, I think five times. We cannot they came with our faith. God is, was, and will be the same God. And so we need to grow in the faith. We need to cultivate the faith. The stations of the cross and masses are not done for pews. Sometimes the pews are more heated than the people in the pews. With the energy that we put in. Some people complain about pastors who does not do this, this, and this. Why they don't do this? Because you don't have time. So why are you going to get an rating? What are we doing for that to purify ourselves? Christ does not need to rise again. He is risen. His glory is eternal. I need to die to my sin. I need to find my misery. I need to bury my sin on Good Friday. I need to rise to celebrate the joy in Jerusalem. Because if that is not so, then Easter has no meaning. That's why Jesus gave us the sacrament of penance on that very day of Easter. As the Father has sent me, I send you. The sins that you forgive will be forgiven because you the price for us. And now he is allowing his mercy to be in your hands and mine. The church of tomorrow, dear people, depends on each one of us here. I am more, more than you, and you with me are building tomorrow. And if we want to build tomorrow to be a promise tomorrow, we need to involve ourselves in our wonderful and our loving church. If we want our doors to remain open so our young people may be they turn from their from their dreams or darkness of sin and they found happiness and also the mercy of God in their hearts, we need to build tomorrow. And tomorrow is today, right now. I put my foot on the threshold of tomorrow. Don't think that you are going to do it when, when I have nothing to do, then I do it. That's not going to happen. You make a schedule. And that schedule, nobody can touch it. Because that is between you and God. I know that many of my servants go from this year to this year, but I am just telling you. So when I am dead and buried, which is going to be soon, I hope, you say, oh, one time you told me. Much of my prophecy has come true. Your spirit will close if you have this attitude. Your doors of this church will close if you have this attitude. But I will say to them, I told you so, because evidence proves it right. You cannot continue.
continue with this so, so, so phase. We need to stand up and build ourselves to strengthen our faith, to have a personal relation with Jesus. That's very important here. That's why prayer is an assistant. Personal relationship with the Lord Jesus. There is the secret of growth. And then, I myself recognize that I have done evil in the sight of God. I have hurt my, my, my fellow man. And now I need to repent. To purify myself from it. Because God wants to forgive me. God wants to love me. But he wants me to also accept. He is very loved, as he said to me, in the person of Jesus Christ. And my last verse to you is, think seriously about what God wants for you. Don't let the season go by and really caught you by surprise when we are about to celebrate Easter. Because you know what happened then? Nothing can be accomplished. I ask you to remember the first reading today and to see what we have read. Remember what Jesus has said in the Gospel to remind us of the, of the very much as in coordination with the first reading. And show us what St. Paul has really pointed out to us that although God forgives us when we are ungodly, although His mercy is infinite, don't take advantage of it, because you don't know the time when the Lord will call you home. And you have to make amendments 